In these times when everyone is living in fear, it is very difficult for people to take a stand. And I am interested in taking a stand. This heart is my Valentine to the United States. It was the first time that I woke up with a total image in my head. I'm pretty much a self-taught quilter. I do research. <laughs> I experiment. For me, each quilt is a process, and in that process there is a learning, and the learning is about me. I was born in 1937 in Macon, Georgia, and I was raised all up and down the East Coast. I never saw anyone in my family quilt. My grandmother had some quilts, so she probably did when she was a younger woman. I'd been sewing since I was five, and I made all my clothes, but I had never made a quilt. I went to college, went to graduate school, majored in chemistry worked in chemistry for 13 or 14 years. I made my first quilt in 1991 as a result of a friend asking for a quilt square for her 50th birthday. So I went to the library, got six books, sat down and started reading, cut out a pattern, sewed it together. Didn't like it because it was pretty bad made another one, and the next day went out and bought fabric to make a quilt. I first started out with traditional patterns, and after that, I got a book on African designs, and I took one class when strip quilting which broke loose a lot of things that I had wanted to do that I had not been able to figure out how to do. And after that, I was just gone. I was looking for other unusual blocks and a friend said, let's fold origami. So I folded origami and then I unfolded origami and I had another set of blocks. And then, you know, it's just been one thing after another. Something catches my attention and I will try to put it in a quilt. For me, it's about exploring. Some people say by exploring the same technique over and over and over again, adding something, subtracting something, they get something out of that. It would drive me crazy. For me, each quilt is a process, and in that process there is a learning, and the learning is about me. For example, my first quilt, I didn't get enough fabric, and I started thinking about we're always raised not to have enough, not to have enough, not to have enough. And then I went back twice to buy extra fabric, and I never bought enough. So again, I was being, I was inadequate. I couldn't figure it out. I, you know, it was all of those messages that I had gotten all my life about being adequate. So I didn't get enough fabric. They didn't have any more. And the question was, can I have one block in this quilt that is different than all the others? And when I said that, I had to really laugh because that had been the story of my life since I was 21 years old, being the different one among all of these similar people. So I was the one different block among all the same blocks. That's the kind of thing that the first quilts were about. And it was always about these large issues that had impacted my life, and it put them in perspective. I have resisted political quilts. 
But after 2000 election and the Supreme Court stepping in and deciding who was going to be president, and then all the subsequent things that had happened, I had no choice. I just gave in to it, and that's what I said I would do. This is what I'm going to do for the next four years. Two museums have collected my work. Seeing Red is at the Rocky Mountain Quilt Museum as part of their permanent collection, and Candy Box is at the Smithsonian as part of its permanent collection. Most of my quilts I have sold. People often ask me, they said, oh, how can you let these things go? And I don't have a problem with it. You know, the, the quilts go where they're supposed to go. For me, the process is the thing. What I learn in the making of it is the thing. The finished product is just that, it's the finished product. And it can go wherever it goes. <laughs>